am out today um, trying to get back onto the Sussex border path but um, I was trying to pick up from where I was I think the last time I was out last year was at a lovely village called Compton just on the border uh, north of Chichester and not too far from Roland Castle and I'm going to pick up the plan is to pick up the Sussex border path the official walk that you can do and on my way I just happened to stop and I passed here at Itsworth, I think it is St Hubert's Church now I've been here before as soon as I saw it I thought hang on a minute I've been here before with Liz Housden and I'll link to the video that takes us to the church I just wanted to sort of register it on this video here we are in January on a beautiful sunny day sunny morning when we came last time as I remember there was restoration work and I believe there are 14th century paintings inside but I'm not going to linger too much here because I want to get back onto the onto the path and get through Lady Holt Park but I just thought it was worth, as I say, just bringing it in this beautiful sunshine to have a look at it. amazing church I'd forgotten just how beautiful it is mostly nave massive great big chancel arch here and uh, of course it's got these box queue, uh, pews in front of me and then a few basic pews here um, tiny tiny little splayed windows which look like they were Saxon so um, I'm, I can't remember the details about it and that's why I'll link to the other video which I think has more information of course you know Wikipedia will tell you a bunch of stuff that you need to know but absolutely gorgeous and it's nice to actually come back to a church or a place after they've done their restoration stuff and you can see it now and behind me I guess these are the 14th century um, wall more memorials or wall paintings um, totally and utterly gorgeous and beautifully preserved so nice to see and of course there's been a, a number of additional features on the roof just above me there various features in the what looks like in the plaster so uh, yeah how how beautiful of course it's surrounded by countryside and I mentioned this I think in the previous video that the the houses that would have been here when it was originally built have long gone um, which is a shame of course you know back in the Saxon times or 1100s whenever uh, things have moved on land has been reclaimed and and so on and so forth but it's just a stunning stunning place up here in the sun what atmosphere you get Things like this, visiting these wonderful monuments to our histories, that makes the quest for England just feel so right for me. These places are, and I say this so many times, are so important for our heritage 
And I'm always impressed that the people in the area do continue as best they can to look after these fantastic churches. We may not, in the numbers that we used to, come here to pray or even to meditate and think about life and what our spirituality means to us. But the fact that they've been here for thousands of years, or at least um, 8,000 years, uh, generation after generation, you know, this generation that we're in now has no right to let them, I think, fall into disuse. Beautiful. So I've moved the car a little bit now and I've taken a, about a mile, I suppose, little journey and I'm leaving the van there. I said car, didn't I? I think I'm leaving the van there and I'm going to try and get onto the Sussex border path, which I believe is just a little up here. So about a mile and a half north of Idsworth. So see if we can find it. Well, I found it, the Sussex border path. So I'm not actually going to be following the Sussex border path all the time, but uh, this is really the only way to go and follow the border at the moment, because we're going to go through Lady Holt Park, or at least that's where the border actually goes through. So following the official footpath makes perfect sense. Now it's a bit muddy and I inadvertently put the, uh, the wrong boots on this morning. So I'm just going to try and avoid some of the muddier parts of this. Um, one of the interesting historical features of um, Lady Holt Park, oh, this is Harris's Lane, by the way, um, a track now, I, I guess at one time, uh, a very important lane, because I believe, and I may have got this wrong, in 17... Well, it's either 1750, 1745, I can't remember exactly. Um, this is the route used by smugglers, and in particular, um, a bunch of smugglers who were on the, on the case, on the trail of two guys, um, Chater, um, now I forget their names, it's Chater and Galley. One was either William Chater and Daniel Galley, or it was Daniel Galley and William, or Daniel Chater and William Galley, you know, one, it was one of those. If I remember, I'll bung it on the screen. Hang on, I've just got to change my hands because it's so heavy. Beautiful landscape here, as you can probably appreciate. And I believe Harris's Lane is mentioned in the story, uh, a real story. Now, 
I'm going to give you a pre precy of it, which I have to say may be a little bit out of date. I haven't read this story up for a long time. So here we go. What happened was, um, I believe there was a smugglers raid that came in. It was caught by the preventative men and the uh, customs men. A bunch of a huge amount of tea by the Hawkehurst gang. The tea was locked up in Pool Harbour and the Hawkehurst gang came in and thought well you're not having our tea and they broke in and they got the tea and they handed out the tea to a number of their people and one of them was this chap, a shoemaker called Chater. Now Chater was a bit of a blabbermouth and although he had this tea, this illicit tea, he started to tell people about it and the Hawkehurst gang got wind of this and so did the uh, authorities. So William Galley, who I think was a customs officer, was going to take Chater to um, a magistrate somewhere, I guess Petersfield way, something like that. I can't remember exactly where he was going. But anyway, they had to come through uh, a certain number of places and I believe they stopped at Roland Castle where they had a drink and that's where things started to go wrong. So things had got, um, began to get interesting because in the tavern, these two were talking about what they were up to and were overheard by the landlady of the pub. I can't remember the name of the pub now. I don't know if it's still in existence. And so then what happened was that she told members of the Hawkehurst gang that these guys were staying overnight in the tavern and that's when they started to have mortal danger um, and it's quite a long and involved uh, story if i can find a link directly to the story i will um, there was a lot of roughing up of the two um, they were the, the the smugglers who turned up uh, began to get very drunk and abused these two awfully eventually they tied them up, they, they left them overnight, I think in um, a shed, and then the following day they tied them and dragged them behind the horses. Um, so that was pretty gruesome. And I remember, if I've got this right, that they came up Harris Lane into Lady Holt Park, eventually um, having whipped, dragged, punched, beaten up and cut, they buried uh, Galley, the um, preventative man or ex-custom man, whatever he was, in a shallow grave and left him to die. Chater, they threw down a well in Lady Holt Park, somewhere up here. And he got to the bottom of this well, I think it must have been a dry well, for he moaned. And because they realised he still wasn't dead, and because they didn't want him to talk, um, they started to throw posts and stones down until the moaning stopped and they left him for dead. That's the story. This isn't, by the way, a Philip Mercer story. This is a, a genuine um, story that is... Um, the, the, the smugglers were eventually caught and uh, tried at the Assizes in Chichester and hanged um, on the Broyle Road just outside Chichester. Years later... I was doing a podcast with my friend Paul Stoneman and we came up, I can't remember now exactly how we got to it, but we were walking on the lane where the well was and just inside the woodland we found the very well and I nearly fell down it. It was still exposed. It was just an opening and you could drop about 15 feet. Luckily I didn't. I did write to the council and say, hey, this well is open. Anyone could fall down it, a child, a kid, an animal, anything. I don't think I'm going to get that far in today's video, but I'm going to explore a little bit further. But a, a horrific tale from the Hawkehurst gang's melissony 
of horrific tales in that particular classic period of smuggling history. I don't know who Lady Holt was. Um, I hadn't ever, I don't think I've ever looked that up actually. Lady Holt, there's, I think there's a Lady Holt house. I'm assuming that Lady Holt was some dignitary and that there was a, um, I don't know, probably a, a Lord Holt or a, or a Major Holt or some sort of Holt chap in which uh, Perhaps he died, or perhaps uh, Lady Holt inherited a, an estate. Anyway, it's a, I believe it's a park. Oops. I believe it's a park of some description. The, the lane here now, Harris uh, Lane, has become quite, um, although frosty here in the cold, um, is, it has actually become quite muddy. And you can picture six, seven horses galloping up here with the bodies of... Um, galley and chater on the back they're not quite dead at this point and uh, and then somewhere I remember on the left here I remember venturing into this woodland in a clearing and about 20 feet into the into the clearing is where I found the well uh, probably off this path here somewhere whether I could ever find it again it's so doubtful I can hear all around me the ice melting, dropping from the trees. There's this sort of little, it's like, it's like an electric charge trickling through the undergrowth. And then the occasional pheasant chirping away, screeching, I suppose, whatever, whatever noise you would describe. Quite eerie here in the silence as it must have been that night when those two wretched Englishmen came to their mortal end. And you may ask yourself why there was a well. And I've often wondered why there was a well. This is a, a parkland, it's deserted. But you wonder if perhaps there was uh, woodman's cottages workers' cottages nearby, and they needed the well to draw water. Um, had to be a reason for a well to be there, or some point earlier, because I think it was a dry well. So perhaps um, it was well before the park was even um, a thing. Well, I've got... Um, the, 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 the track, the Sussex border path carries on in that direction. But I'm going to pause my journey here, warm myself up because it's a bit cold, head back to the van, have a cup of coffee. I think that's the answer. And then we can try and get from here further on to um, the Sussex borderland in another, in another episode. There's nothing better than a cup of coffee after a walk and you'll know that that's what I love to do and unfortunately I didn't bring any food. <laughs> I've got biscuits in the van, I'm not really supposed to eat them. It's got sugar in and stuff. But uh, I'm going to wait till I get home before I eat. Just looking for a spoon. 
and uh, I'll just have a quick coffee, I think, and then I'll get on the road. That's loud when it whistles, isn't it? from the odd passing van or car this is a very quiet spot it's rather beautiful and I'm going to enjoy my coffee ah. so I aim to pick up the Sussex border walk probably from the north end of Ladydale Park now the rest of that is very similar you just go through that. So I've got to work out where to park, find the north end and then follow a bit more of the Hampshire and Sussex border. And we'll be back on it again. It's good to be back on it actually. It has been a while. Down the hatch. <laughs> 